Before the 2004 Democratic National Convention, most Americans had never heard of Barack Obama. At the time, he was just a candidate for a Senate seat from Illinois. And to never, ever go to war without enough troops to win the war. But his soaring rhetoric spoke to people who were tired of politics as usual. Just two and a half years later, Obama stood in front of the old state capitol in Illinois, the same place where Abraham Lincoln began his political career to kick off his presidential campaign. I stand before you today to announce my candidacy for president of the United States of America. At the time, the New York Times wrote that the speech was a generational call to arms, and that Obama portrayed his campaign less as a candidacy and more as a movement. Thank you. But the road to the White House would be far from obstacle free. He faced candidates who were better known. And Obama faced another question. Could he raise enough money to compete on a national level? Beginning in the heartland of America. Among the most formidable opponents, John Edwards, the 2004 Democratic vice presidential nominee. And that's what I intend to do when I am president. And Hillary Clinton, wife of a former president and New York senator. It's time for me to step, step aside. Edwards' so candidacy never caught fire, but Obama and Clinton faced off in a pitched primary battle that lasted until June of this year. It's got about 18 million cracks in it. While Obama and Clinton received a similar number of votes, the Obama campaign became a master of delegate math. They didn't just look at winning states, they looked at how to target the right districts within states to rack up the most Democratic delegates. That strategy proved decisive and it secured the Democratic nomination for the first-term senator from Illinois. At the Democratic National Convention in Denver, Obama accepted the nomination in a packed stadium before tens of thousands of people. I accept your nomination. But Obama still had a long way to go. Arizona Senator John McCain had secured the Republican nomination for president. He brought a compelling personal history to the race and a lifetime of political experience. McCain was a war hero and had a reputation for not always following the Republican herd. McCain's pick of Alaska Governor Sarah Palin as his running mate energized his campaign. The pair instantly drew crowds that rivaled those of Obama. Palin coverage dominated the news cycles. Then came the economic crisis. Obama launched on a McCain statement that the fundamentals of the economy were sound. Part of the president's job to deal with more than one thing at once. Obama hammered McCain's proposal to postpone the first presidential debate. McCain's campaign was sliding. Obama was widely seen as the winner of the last three presidential debates. McCain's campaign never recovered. As election day grew near, it became increasingly clear that Obama would be the winner. And he is now the president-elect of the United States. Matt Friedman, The Associated Press.